Hello again and greetings from lovely North Wales and uh, in particular uh, Kimmel Bay Church. Uh, welcome to our morning meditation in the scriptures and today we are looking at John's Gospel chapter 3. John's Gospel chapter 3 and uh, if you want to read the first I guess about 16 verses uh, then please press your pause button and uh, I will wait for you. Right, you're back with me now, and you've read the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, this man who probably is the best known for a one-to-one -one conversation in many ways with the Lord Jesus. Maybe the best known conversation recorded, really, this one where he talks to the Lord Jesus uh, on this occasion at night, by the way. He came after dark, and we don't really know why. We don't know why he came after dark. What we do know is that he did, and uh, some think that he came after dark because he was too busy during the day. He was a religious leader. He was part of the leadership of the, uh, the, the um, Jewish religious um, groups there, and uh, some think that he was too busy during the day to come. Others think that he came because... He didn't really want to advertise the fact amongst his contemporaries that he was going to uh, have a word with this radical preacher who'd, who'd, who'd come on the scene. And um, we don't really know the reason, but we do know that he did come after dark. He came by night, and um, why he was so secretive, we don't know. What we do know is that he wanted to know what this radical preacher was about. He... Uh, the interesting thing is about this is that he did, but his fellow leaders didn't. All they could do really was criticise this uh, preacher who'd come, the Lord Jesus. But not Nicodemus. Nicodemus uh, was sympathetic, I think, to uh, a new person and w was prepared to give him a proper hearing. And uh, his fellow leaders, as we might like to note, didn't bother. Now, I believe that that made me think really about our religious leaders in our world today. And I was thinking about the Western world in particular, I think, really. Now, I'm not um, talking in particular direction of any denomination. Really, I'm not. But what I am saying is that we're surrounded with many so-called religious leaders who are more concerned with ritual and ceremony than with learning what Jesus had to say about eternal things. Many are concerned with the um, trimmings, if you like, of religious uh, leadership rather than speaking out the truth of, of the Bible. Many pulpits and platforms are occupied with uh, so-called leaders who are frankly leading the flock in the wrong direction, or certainly not in the right direction. And um, this is sad, this is sad. And you and I ought to be praying for them. We ought to be praying, not just standing on the touchline and criticising and saying, oh dear, uh, and, and giving thanks for what we are and all the rest of it. No, no, we ought to be praying for them. We ought to be praying that the Lord will draw them back to true biblical exposition so that... Um, the flock, us, may learn properly what Jesus had to say and what he meant by what he had to say. Now, we don't know whether Nicodemus responded to the message he heard from the Lord Jesus. We don't know. Uh, we don't hear any more about him, with the exception of two brief mentions, both in John's Gospel. One is in chapter 7, when... Um, the uh, Nicodemus's contemporaries were criticizing the Lord Jesus and Nicola, Nicodemus stood up for him and said uh, that uh, surely they, you know, they, they should hear a man before they criticize him and condemn him. He, he was all for justice for this man, this preacher who had appeared on the scene. That was the first uh, uh, occasion. And then um, on the second occasion is in the 19th chapter of John, it was after the Lord Jesus had been crucified and um, 
Nicodemus appears again, right out of the woodwork. We hadn't heard anything from him since. And he appears linked up with a man called Joseph of Arimathea. And between them, they uh, buried the Lord's body in the tomb, which actually belonged to Joseph of Arimathea, we read. And they uh, gave dignity to the Lord's body and uh, arranged for his burial properly and so on. That's the only mentions we've got of Nicodemus, as far as I can see, and I think I'm right in saying, uh, but we don't know whether uh, he, he, uh, he, he responded to the, um, the, the message of the, of the Bible and the message of the Lord Jesus. They didn't have the Bible then, of course, but they had the Old Testament, and the Lord Jesus was interpreting the Old Testament to them. And he was um, telling them that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And surely this, the fact that we don't really know uh, what uh, the outcome of uh, Nicodemus's inquiries were. It looks likely that he must have uh, been sympathetic to the Lord Jesus uh, because of those two occasions when he supported the Lord Jesus, as it were. But we don't really know. And surely this is a reminder to us, is it not? that we need to be keep praying for folks who we know have heard the gospel, we know have heard the truth of the Bible, we know have heard uh, the truth of Jesus' words, but have not yet, um, as far as we're aware, uh, made a response to his claims upon their lives. Don't let's give up. Let's keep praying. There are many of our fellow Christians who have prayed for people, relatives, family members, uh, friends, neighbours, all sorts of people, employers even, uh, have prayed for uh, many people for many years and not seen a positive result. Don't let's give up, dear friend, dear Christian friend. Let's keep praying uh, that they will one day turn the corner and make a, a decision to follow Jesus. And this whole issue of personal one-to-one -one conversation between this man and Jesus uh, is is a, is an issue really, um, because uh, it, it it presents a wonderful opportunity. He came man to man. He came one to one, uh, and it reminds us that uh, the value of uh, a one to one conversation. It reminds us uh, of the the the. Um, the way that concentration is, is, is made, really, when there's just one-to-one, -one. It's, um, it, it's an issue that um, uh, we can reach folks so much easier, in a way, on a one-to-one -one basis. I'm searching for words here to try and put this into the meaning that I want. And so often, on a one-to-one -one basis, we can share the, oppor the opportunity to... Um, a given account of how we personally came to the Lord Jesus, how we personally came to faith. And there's nothing quite like relating a personal experience. People are always interested in someone's personal experience. People are always interested in how you and I came to a, the Christian faith. They don't always respond to mass uh, sort of approach, but they do tend to respond so often to a one-to-one -one, uh, testimony, that's the word I want, one-to-one uh, -one testimony of how the Lord Jesus came into our lives. Nicol Nic Nicodemus has gone down in history. He's gone down in history along with many others in Scripture as a person who met the Lord Jesus and was never quite the same again. Well, if you meet the Lord Jesus and you take him on board in your life, you're never quite the same again. You're better. You're wonderfully better. The Bible says, doesn't it? Uh, Paul says in the word, if any man is in Christ, if any man has become a Christian, if any man, woman, has taken Jesus into their lives, they're a new creature, he says not just turned over a new leaf. He says they're a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. How wonderful. 
Has that been your experience, I wonder? Well, we can't meet Jesus physically today, of course, but we are able to meet him through his word, through the Bible, through the scriptures, and through speaking to him in prayer. He wants to hear from you and me. He wants to hear from us on a daily basis. The old hymn says, Whosoever will may come. And that's a lovely old hymn, that. Whosoever will may come. How true, how true. None of us need be left out. Peter says in one of his letters that God is not willing that anyone should perish. God is not willing that anyone should perish. How wonderful. What a love. What a, what a mercy. What a, a gracious attitude from the creator of the universe, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, almighty God, the creator of God. How wonderful that he stoops to ask the love of your poor heart and mine. Goodbye. The Lord bless you.